So, hello, welcome to Proclamation Nation. We're here with a special episode because we have a special guest, Richard Gage from Architects Engineers for 9-11 Truth. Uh, Richard, yeah. you uh, came to Buffalo. You spoke a few days, a few events for us. Um, you had quite a turnout of people that went from being unsure about the official story of 9-11 to uh, you able to convince them that, uh, that something's going on. Uh, is that normal? Is that normal for, for your events, for your presentations, to be able to attract so many people to uh, a new version of events that day? Yeah, it is actually. Uh, this evidence uh, for the destruction of the World Trade Center towers on 9-11 is uh, extraordinarily compelling. And it's made my job, in a sense, uh, very easy uh, because I've just compiled the research that others have done and presented. And 95% of people end up agreeing with us. So it's really rather extraordinary. Uh, last night, for instance, uh, we had, uh, what, 100, 100, 120, 150 people. I forget the numbers now. Yeah. Um, most of them agreed with us at the beginning, of course, uh, because that's what happens at these events. It attracts mostly people who are who are already aware. Uh, but there there were at least uh, 40 people who were unsure of our of 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 what brought the towers down, and all of them were sure that Building Seven was a controlled demolition, uh, except for two. And uh, all but six were unsure about the Twin Towers, except for the same two. Uh, those two were uh, uh, Professor Mark O'Brien and his wife, who we invited to come because they were one of the few people willing to come and present and defend the official story. And so we, were, we, we had a great discussion afterwards. I thought that was quite enlightening. We learned how people think who can see this evidence and somehow not be convinced by it. Sure. Uh, it was, uh, we'll, we'll get to that uh, discussion. But uh, yeah, it, it is, it is uh, this, this evidence is, is completely compelling. <clears throat> sure and it is. just, it makes it a joy to, to present because, and, and to debate with people. Uh, we have a debate on September 11th with a couple of physicists, Niels Harrod and myself, and we're just really looking forward to it because we're standing on uh, uh, truth that most people, most all people, recognize after they dedicate a half hour to hearing it. Exactly. Now, you uh, have some plans coming up. You're going to be going to Toronto uh, mm -hmm. for some international hearings on 9-11. Uh, could you talk a little bit about what you're going to be presenting, uh, maybe not what you're presenting, but who's going to be presenting with you, uh, and what is actually going to come about from this international hearing? Yeah, this is a, a new event uh, in 9-11 Truth, where uh, technical professionals and researchers are being brought together in a consolidated environment. Um, you know, there's only, you know, one or two hundred seats it's sold out um, for four days uh, like 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. these four days are, are going to be uh, filled with uh, very tight presentations of technical evidence to distinguished panel members who are receiving written submissions along with these verbal and graphic presentations um, I'm I'm very excited to uh, be uh, invited to participate in it because uh, I will be consolidating the, the 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 evidence for the Building Seven and the Twin Towers in, in their behavior, um, the, the 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 symmetrical total destruction of these buildings, uh, particularly. Uh, others will be focusing on the extreme temperatures uh, that are that are found in in the molten metal. The the, the uh, previously molten iron microspheres, the nanothermite chips, 
uh, there's specialists in each of these areas, which is which is unique, because usually I present an overview right, of sure. each of them. So, uh, uh, this the results of this forum will be presented to the Canadian governments, the U.S. government, the media in a, in a very uh, a formal package. So we hope something comes of it. So the, the, they're going to have to address this. You're saying that with, with all the all the people taking place, that it's going to have to be addressed. It can't just be sloughed off any any longer. <clears throat> well, I, I I suppose it can be sloughed off forever, uh, but at some point, what we're doing is building uh, a grassroots movement. With, with, with the public is becoming aware of this. Fifty percent of New Yorkers, according to a recent poll, uh, just a couple of months ago, want a new investigation uh, of Building 7. Uh, so we, we're, making, we're, we're making headway. We talk to people in the streets as we're passing out literature, and they are responding a whole lot differently than they did uh, five years ago. Uh, people are more open-minded. It's 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 it. Everybody who is it, who has been around for at least that amount of time, and is active in 9/11 Truth, will uh, will ha has the same story. So, uh, it but it is a, a bit like watching a swimming pool fill up <laughs> for sure, five sure. years. It, it's a slow, gradual process. Well, that's the next question I wanted to ask. You know, you have architects and engineers. 9/11 Truth. Dot org. And over the course of this time, now, you started this five, six years ago, correct? Yes. Have you seen five. a general progression in, uh, have you seen a, an accumulative effect with uh, the architects and engineers that you've been able to, to bring to this, this understanding? You have, I think, uh, 1,500 architects and engineers on board? Yeah, uh, we started with uh, one, that was myself, and um, and then uh, 15, the first uh, firm we did a presentation for, uh, the firm I worked for, all 15 of them thought I was nuts. And then uh, I presented to them uh, at lunch and they all agreed with me. They were floored by this evidence. So I knew it was like shooting fish in a barrel. You don't shoot fish in a barrel. Um, but it... <laughs> okay, now... Thump. Well, wait. Now, now there's 1,500, and that number is, is just right. going to just keep increasing. Right. Multi it's multiplying. Yeah. It's, it's, okay. Uh, when, when because you... every architect or engineer who sees this information, at least for half an hour, where we can go through it carefully, agrees with us. Uh, it's, it, it is a rather extraordinary. It seems maybe the trick is to get them there, to, to yes. see the event. Yeah, that is the trick. And we tried to get, what, uh, 60 or 80 of them there last night at this technical presentation, and 30 of them even agreed to be there, right? Uh, they had reservations, and they didn't show up. And, and that's, that, that is our battle. Sure. Getting them in. When, when you go to New York City, you're going to be in New York City on the 11th, September 11th. You're kind of a 9-11 warrior, a truth warrior for all of us that are into this understanding. Uh, what kind of reception do you normally get when you travel to New York City? Well, the reception I receive from those who are bringing me there is extraordinary. Just like here in Buffalo. Uh, in every city I go to, there is a handful of very dedicated activists who are doing 90% of the work for the whole city. and. Um, uh, that's been fairly consistent for five years. What? And sometimes that handful is, is, is a couple of dozen. Here in Buffalo, it amounts to uh, uh, you know up to a, up to a dozen uh, of extremely dedicated, incredible activists like yourself and 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 the glo anti-globalization group that you have here. Um, uh, when we go outside of those who are so supportive of us. Uh, it is a mixed bag, and, and, and I would say half the people have no consciousness, conscious awareness of, 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 of what we're doing or why, and the other half are either curious or, or you know, there's a, and there's a handful who are kind of 
violently opposed to us because they're just ignorant of the facts and they've made their conclusions based on their worldview that uh, we're conspiracy, conspiracy theorists or whatever. Uh, even though we don't have <laughs> any theories or conspiracy theories, uh, we just bring the evidence and let people draw their own conclusions. I have uh, one, one last question for you, Richard. At some point after 9-11, you uh, you didn't have the same viewpoint you do now. Can you tell us a little bit how you came to the understanding that the uh, the towers were a controlled demolition? Yeah, um, I remember watching the towers come down. I was I was at home that morning, 9/11, and I just remember being feeling disso dissociated and and not understanding what was happening. Uh, as we learned that these were attacks, we're just just feeling kind of shock, basically. Yeah. Now, I saw those towers, just like you did, being blown up with lateral ejections, uh, almost free fall uh, destruction. Total destruction pulverization in mid-air uh, of all of this concrete, uh, the geometry of fireworks, anything but a gravitational collapse, and I, like probably 98% of other architects and engineers in the country, did not say, hey, that building is being blown up. That's not a gravitational collapse. Some people saw this right away. I wasn't one of them, and I'm I'm not very proud of that fact, but I can un I can understand what happened to me and other architects and engineers in our minds because we were placed in a state of shock on that day. We were in a hypnotic trance based on the attacks that were happening, and there is no frame of reference for us to understand how those buildings came down because never has a building been blown up from the top down. In fact, never has a, a skyscraper collapsed due to fire. We have no idea what it should have looked like. So you're saying this was a first in demolition history? Well, yeah, um, it was. And and so without a frame of reference to place it in, we uh, absorbed within 24 or 48 hours what the experts were telling us. That, oh yeah, this is a gravitational collapse due to, uh, uh, due to overwhelming of the structural members by the heat from the fire. Uh, and so five years later, I heard on the radio, for the first time, uh, some an alternative theory, a and evidence that I'd never heard in the from the government or the media, uh, evidence, uh, uh, detailed evidence about uh, about the the lateral ejection of these steel members, the, the, the pulverization of this 90,000 tons of concrete to a fine powder, the um, the evidence of of molten metal uh, in underneath all three buildings uh, previously molten iron microspheres and all the World Trade Center dust documented by government sources and now or two years ago uh, nanothermite composite explosives found in all the dust so this was this, this is overwhelming evidence and we didn't know about it so the shocking part of it wasn't so much the evidence it's why we didn't know about sure. it why the media won't do anything about it why the government is sloughing it off, as you say. Uh, so uh, I knew I had to do something about this, and I was shocked that it was me at the time, five years ago, being the only one speaking about this. Uh, not the only one, but the only one actively engaging architects and engineers in creating an organization. Well, yeah, what you did, what you did is really phenomenal. Uh, AE911truth.org is a great website to learn the facts about the de demolition of the uh, Twin Towers and building number seven. Uh, we are really proud of you for what you're doing and we hope that someday in the future you can pay a visit to Western New York again. Uh, again, my name is Eric Plansky. I'm with Richard Gage and uh, have a great day everybody. Thanks Eric. Awesome. Thank you Richard. <laughs>